Al, welcome back. Thank you. How does it uh, feel to be here? Does it feel kind of right back in the groove, or is it some readjusting to be back on a UFC fight week? No, right back in the groove. Feels good. Yeah, the only difference is the Venom fight gear. I like it. Um, yeah, it's other than that, it's same, same kind of fight week. Right back where we left off. Yeah. So, can you clear the air on like you know the I guess coming on this card? I know you had said maybe originally you weren't sure if you'd be ready to fight on this event, and then all, obviously ultimately you're here. So, what was the process in getting you back in the cage? I uh, I just I had a surgery. Uh, it was during COVID. I don't know, maybe a year and a half ago, and it took a lot longer than the doctors had anticipated me to recover. So I didn't know what was going on. Nobody knew what was going on, why I was feeling the way I was feeling. But I just pushed through it. Uh, I just, you know, it was tough, but I every day just kept going. Uh, started to feel good. Um, I trained people, uh, like, in the neighborhood and, and uh, started just, like, moving around with some guys a little bit. Like, I was... For a while, I would just train them and kind of sit there and be depressed that they were training, and, and I was, you know, pushing them and stuff. But then I started moving around with them, and I was like, wow, I'm actually feeling pretty good. So I hit, I, I, uh, I called Ray, and I was like, Ray, you want to try hitting some pads? He goes, oh, get, get down here. Come on. Come on. Let's go. So uh, we hit pads, and I felt good. And um, it was maybe a couple of weeks later that – so I started getting into training slow, not crazy, and, and then um, – and then they announced that MSG was happening. And uh, I was thinking about it in the back of my head, and I saw Bobby Green fight. And we were supposed to fight in 2015, and that fight never ended up happening. So in my head, I was like, oh, you know, Bobby Green, he didn't, he didn't win the fight. But I honestly thought he won the fight. It was a great fight. He came on strong at the end. And then the next day, my manager texted me that UFC just offered you Bobby Green at MSG. And I was like, I'm perfect. I'm in. So it all kind of just like came together at the right time. It was, uh, yeah, it was like, it yeah, just that's that's how it came together, and it was it worked out really good. Was there any moments of doubt? Like, did you need to come back and fight again, or if you know it didn't work out and that was the end, would you have been satisfied with what you did, or do you feel like there's still unfinished business when it comes to what you want to accomplish in the sport? Uh, I don't – it would have been whatever it was. I don't think – you know, I would – the whole time I wanted to come back, but if I couldn't, I was going to, you know, do do whatever I was doing. But I, I, the reason I was pushing myself through physical therapy is uh, – first, I just wanted to feel good as a human being walking around, living life. But then, um, yeah, I just wanted to – this is who I am. I'm a, I'm a fighter at heart, so – and last thing, uh, you mentioned you're supposed to fight Bobby years ago, so I'm sure you kind of know about his style and uh, what he does in there. He's a guy who, whether it's a win or a loss, it's usually a really close fight, and he, you know, feels he's wronged on decisions or things like that. So, what do you feel you have to do to go in there uh, and beat him definitively? Obviously, you know, a knockout or a submission would be great, but to kind of create that separation in the fight where it's not extremely close when the three rounds are over, if it goes that far. Yeah, I think that's the. Uh, I think that's like Bobby Green's thing. He kind of keeps it, keeps it close, but doesn't. It's almost uh, he's got a, he's got a really unique style, and it's he's been fighting often. Uh, I'm going in there to fight. I'm not going in there to do anything else. Or, you know, have a good show or whatever. To, I'm going in there to fight and win. So I think that's that's going to be the difference. Oh, to your left over here. Does this kind of feel like a back against the wall situation for you going into this fight? Not really. It kind of feels like a like a second chance. I don't. I feel like uh, I'm not probably a lot of fighters probably wouldn't made it here, being through like the injuries and stuff. So I'm gonna go out there and just. I don't. I really don't care. It's gonna be. It's gonna be fun either way. It's Madison Square Garden. It's you know. This is. I don't know if this is like. Uh, yeah, it's um, it's cool that this is happening. So I'm embracing it all, and it's going to be fun. Are you hoping to be a little bit more active, you know, going forward now that you know everything's all good? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. This is where I want to be. Best of luck, man.
Uh, since your last fight, there's been kind of a lot of influx in the lightweight division. So what do you make of the state of the 155-pound division with all the new additions and a lot of fighters have retired or changed weight classes? Yeah, it's, it's wild. Uh, it's an exciting division. The end of the year is going to be really exciting. You got the uh, Gaethje Chandler on this card, Dustin Oliveira, good fight, Makachev. Makachev Oliveira would be a good fight. You know, that's a good fight. Um, yeah, Dun, Dustin, Makachev, uh, all these guys. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's an exciting time. At the end of the year, I think the uh, next year is going to be uh, big for this division. So, how do you see Poirier and Oliveira playing out next month? I have no idea. I don't know. It's uh. Yeah, Oliveira. I feel like Olive, in the past maybe Oliveira would have, uh, you know, he he had his weakness was like in the in the like as a Aljo, Aljo. It's my time, man. <laughs> uh, in the past, Oliveira would have like kind of like wilted a little bit, but um, no, I'm serious, guys. Who's talking over there? I can't think. I have trouble thinking in, in general. Uh, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, Oliveira was, yeah, he's, he's gotten better with that. He's like, he went through adversity in the, um, in the uh, last fight. So, uh, yeah. Uh, we were supposed to fight. They offered me the fight, and uh, they were pay They weren't. I wasn't happy with what I was getting paid. Justin Gates, he's a tough guy. You're going to war with that guy. This was a while back. I was still on like my first contract or something, so I uh, I told them the number that I wanted to get paid to fight him. It wasn't unreasonable. It was very reasonable compared to what other people were getting paid in the division and uh, the UFC. I, I, he chose to fight James Vick instead. I had, I had, I had messaged him and said, "Don't fight anybody else. Fight me. Um, tell him you're only fighting me." And then uh, he fought James Vick, so it worked out for him. But right. So you mentioned that he ended up fighting James Vick instead of you. Is it safe to say that a fight with Justin Gaethje is something that you're looking forward to down the line? Ah, absolutely. I think that'd be a great fight. The funny thing is. He's managed my – manager, my manager is the same – is managing Michael Chandler, who he's fighting. So uh, after tonight, if we fight again, it will be maybe 0-2 against Dave Martin and Martin Advisory Group, the best management in the world. Thanks, so.